Good evening. Welcome to Left, Right and Center. I'm Vishnu Shom. On the program tonight, RPN Singh, one of the Congress's most prominent leaders in Uttar Pradesh, quit the party today, crossing over to the BJP ahead of next month's assembly election in Uttar Pradesh. He's likely to contest the UP polls from his stronghold of Padrona, from where he's been elected MLA three times. He's also been a former union minister. As he joined the BJP, Mr. Singh said, I have been in one party for the last 32 years, but today I must say that party is no longer what it used to be. This is the latest loss, of course, for the Congress party after other up-and-coming leaders, all of them fairly senior by now. Jitin Prashad and Jyotir Aditya Sindhya joined the BJP. Therefore, the big question, and this keeps coming up, is this a failure of the leadership of the Congress party? That's going to be our first debate tonight. Later on, on this program, a very special guest ahead of Republic Day, Anita Bosfaf, the daughter of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, who was honoured earlier this week, first through a hologram near India Gate, which will eventually be replaced with a statue, joins us in uh, about 10 minutes from now. But first, let's just listen in to what RPN Singh had to say as he joined the BJP today. बहुत सालों से, बहुत समय से, तमाम लोग मुझसे कहते थे कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी में आपको जाना चाहिए। बहुत समय से सोचा पर अंत में यही कह सकता हूं प्रधान जी देर आए दुरुस्त आए माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने प्राचीन संस्कृति को 21वीं सदी से जोड़कर हिंदुस्तान को राष्ट्र के निर्माण में जो कार्य किया है पूरा देश उसको सराहा रहा है 32 सालों तक मैं एक पार्टी में रहा ईमानदारी से लगन से मेहनत किया परंतु जिस पार्टी में इतने साल रहा वो अब वो पार्टी रहने गई जहां मैंने शुरुआत की थी और ना तो वो सोच रह गई है वेल जॉइनिंग अस नाउ डॉक्टर अजय कुमार स्पोक्सपर्सन ऑफ द कांग्रेस पार्टी वी आर आल्सो जॉइंड बाय खुशबू सुंदर ऑफ द बीजेपी कुमार केतकर राज्यसभा एमपी ऑफ द कांग्रेस स्मिता प्रकाश एडिटर ऑफ एएनआई आई लाइक टू थैंक यू ऑल वेरी मच फॉर बीइंग विद अस Dr. Ajay Kumar, let me come to you first. How did the Congress not know that something like this was happening? Uh, Salman Sos, for example, has tweeted just a little while say, ago saying that the timing of this was no coincidence. RPN Singh was going to be a star campaigner for the Congress party. How did this all fall through? How did the Congress not appear to know? Was it just a pure coincidence? No, look, the fact is, <clears throat> unlike our political opponents, you know when we are in touch with the people in the party and you keep denying that you're joining uh, look uh, you might call it up you know uh, a, a shortcoming of the leadership in the congress or the strength that when you say something people believe you and they believe that you're saying it from a point of integrity unfortunately uh, 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 that's you mean to suggest that there were questions asked of rpn singh on whether he's quitting absolutely it's right. a, so so i'm not saying i'm private, and, and uh, what did he say did he say that he wasn't and, Look, he he doesn't have to tell me because he denied it online. So, look, I don't want to get pers uh, on what has happened with Arpian. First question, Vishnu, but since he's left the party, but he publicly said it, right? In repeatedly in his tweets also. I'm not joining. I'm not joining. And as back as two weeks back. Right. Now those are Vishnu. Those are different issues. No, no, no. But, that's the key issue between two weeks back and now. What's happened? No, the key issue is that they, you continue to you see, uh, and I've been saying that and. the congress and his leadership in his party believes what you say and it's a disadvantage in today's uh, world and that may be a negative point no so then are they, are they are, i mean is there an element of naivety that the top leadership of the congress party believes leaders who aren't loyal to them anymore and the larger question no, why are they I, leaving jitin no, no, first question prasad jyotiraditya sindhya rpn singh the equation with such an pilot has been testy for the last couple of years as well so so let me ask you another question uh, sure. if you look at harak singh rawat would you uh, consider him as a bigger leader than rpn singh in terms of political weight so, so do you mean to suggest that he is not all right so that, 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 that doesn't answer my question on whether no, he is a bigger or small leader no, so we should give me a he was still a star campaign all right sorry go ahead no, go ahead yes yes go ahead we should can i, can please, I, please, I please. just want to complete my thought process before i uh, whether it is swami prasad maurya whether it is mr saini whether they are different people leaving the bharatiya janata party their their chief minister's wife and the whole party is leaving in the, in goa 
There are lots of party members leaving in Uttarakhand. So the question again is, election seasons, people are leaving. Unfortunate, but this is how the level of political discourse has become and how people are looking at different opportunities. I think, the, and, and I say it with a lot, uh, lot of seriousness, today the party of Mr. Modi and, uh, and Mr. Uh, Amit Shah, is it democratic? Is Congress paying a price for being the most democratic, most liberal, and you're able to communicate openly? And All right. And your views very strongly. All right. Maybe well, you're, li you're, you're, li you're losing your, your, your finest young faces. I mean, that's a reality. You, <laughs> no, one sec. No, one sec. So you look at it from the other perspective. Look at the new people who are joining and look at All the right. opportunities you're giving. Okay. All right. Just one second. Let me go across to Khushbu Sundar, who's also with us. Um, is this, in a, in a sense, a coup for the BJP, given that you've lost Swami Prasad Maurya to the Samajwadi Party and now you've got R.P. and Singh coming into the BJP? Uh, in that Padrona, Kushinagar area, how is this important for you electorally ahead of the elections? Kushbu, go ahead. Kushbu, can you we hear me? We are talking about yeah. Yeah, go who ahead. we are losing, who we are gaining, and they are coming and joining. I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Go ahead. Okay. Vishnu, we are not talking about where, what we are gaining, what we are losing. What is important is people who trust BJP, they are coming in. Now, it's not that probably we are losing one or two to a different party. We are losing them to AAP or we are losing them to uh, Congress. But I am saying what most important thing is people in majority, they are coming into BJP. When you look at the list of people who have walked into BJP, not only all over the country, but, you know, even in the South, when you look at it, the way people have been walking into BJP, and it's not now. It's been going on since we have had Narendra Modi ji as a prime minister. His leadership is something which people have been trusting and he's building the trust amongst people. And that is when I say among people, it's within the Congress and other leaders also, other party members also. No, but Kuhu, I, myself I take that wasn't... point. I, but my, my question is pointed. And the question is this. What role does RPN Singh play for the BJP ahead of these UP elections or during the UP elections? He's just joined in today. You wait and watch. I'm sure where we have great Chanakyas like Amit Shah ji and our very own Prime Minister who will definitely define a very good role for our RPN Singh ji for coming into BJP. And, and, and I would Kushbu, like to does that extend beyond Uttar Pradesh Singh. to Jharkhand as well? Uh, he's had a real say in the politics of the Congress party in Jharkhand. Uh, in terms of bringing in leaders from Jharkhand into the BJP fold, is that an expectation? I'm not going to discuss anything uh, on this platform, uh, Vishnu. I no, think no, we will leave it to the senior leaders. <laughs> no, no, we will wait for the senior leaders to give a very uh, straight answer to that. I'm sure okay. by tomorrow morning or in a day or two, you will get to hear all the news, what is going to come in. I'm not going to uh, all right. promise so that, I'm not that's going to important. comment anything. So would it therefore be fair for me to say that based on what you just said, in the next two days, there should be a public announcement on the role of RPN Singh among other leaders? That's what I'm saying. The, okay. the the senior leaders are going to take a call on that, All right. and they will definitely when our, when somebody like R P N Singh ji walks into B J P, we wouldn't want him to just be a, a, a mere spectator, a mute spectator. We want him to bring in all his qualifications in the uh, forefront and work for the party. And this is what we are going to do. We we are going to make sure that R P N Singh ji, the way he has worked for Congress, we know what he is capable of, what his abilities are. We're going to put that right in the front All and right. make sure that Arpin Singh ji works for the party. All right. So that's interesting. Uh, Smita, would you like to come in over there? You know, uh, besides looking at the larger issue of, of the Congress and its leadership or the lack thereof, which is almost hackneyed, as, as you know, it, it keeps getting repeated all the time. What role does RPN Singh actually play for the BJP? Is it a master stroke given the exit of Swami Prasad Maurya? Yeah, uh, since Kushpuji can't say because she's a spokesperson, you and I can, we can speak fearlessly because we are journos. Uh, I think, uh, you know, defeating uh, Swami Prasad Maurya is important to the BJP. Uh, he won from Padrona in 2009, in 2012 and 2017, uh, the, that 
the last one under a BJP banner. Uh, and now he's with the Samajwadi Party and uh, he thinks that it being with the SP will win him. Now, if the BJP feels RPN, they haven't said it as yet, uh, but if it feels uh, RPN, it's not going to be exactly very easy because the caste and religious uh, divisions there don't work in either RPN's favor or the uh, BJP's favor because see, there are about 80,000 uh, Muslim votes out there and that is going to go this time on block to the uh, to the Samajwadi party. So it goes to Maurya. Now, uh, then, then comes the 50,000 Yadav votes. Those probably Akhilesh thinks will go to Maurya as well, uh, the Samajwadi party. Then there is Maurya's own caste, which is the Kushwaha caste. Yes. If they vote as per their caste basis, those also go to Maurya. Now it comes to RPN Singh. So, so he's uh, from the Sethwar caste. In mean, many channels, he's being called an OBC. But given his elite and royal background and things like that, he's not really an OBC leader. But if if his caste goes on block for him, then what happens? That's about 40,000 votes or so, which is the same as the Kushwaha votes. Right. So now who will be the deciding factor? It will be the Brahmin and the scheduled caste vote. If we just completely go by caste and uh, religion basis voting, it's not going to be easy either for RPN Singh or Kushwaha if RPN Singh is made to uh, stand for election out there. Because, uh, you know, when RPN won the election in 1991, he, uh, no, no uh, I think after that, in 1991, his mother stood for election and she lost because of the BJP wave. Right. And subsequently, he won later, you know, when he came yes. into politics. He was yes. still young. He came into politics later, but then he he won elections. It's not going to be all that easy because he's just, he's switched too close to the election. Right. All right. That's a key point. Has he switched too close? Uh, Kumar Ketka, the larger issue of the leadership of the Congress, it keeps getting asked over and over again. But the Congress is bleeding some of, you know, your most promising leaders. It's, it's one thing to say that is he a very big leader? You know, he didn't do well in 2014. He didn't win the elections. Uh, is it that big a loss? But the fact of the matter is that he was an excellent minister at, at, at many levels. Uh, you know, and he was seen to be close to, to Rahul Gandhi as well. And now he's gone along with others. So uh, at what stage does this, this bleeding of the Congress stop? whether it will stop or not. Earlier you asked whether the leadership was aware of this or not. Did they not know? I don't think uh, Congress party has still, uh, you know, bought Pegasus services to keep watch on their own leadership or local leaders. So Congress does not have any Pegasus network. So we don't know. We generally trust what the person says. For instance, all these people who are leaving, I am more surprised, not by their departure, I am more surprised by the sudden realization that Modi is a great leader and BJP is a great party and a great patriotic party. For 32 years, they did not think that BJP is a great party. Modi is a great leader. For the last seven years, they were all condemning Modi personally, personally meaning politically, personally. No, but, but, sir, and also the party why is, is that now, happening? I am, I am asking the same question. They can justify from Who's their career point of second. view. Yeah. No, but how do they justify to themselves? What they were saying just about one month ago and what they are saying now, how do they justify it to themselves? So I think it is simple. Well, they were, sir, careerism, uh, uh, respectfully, careerism, Mr. Ketra, they justified it to themselves. They've crossed over. Careerism but Kushu, go ambition. ahead with your point. Last comments, go ahead. No, yes. careerism and ambition has replaced ideological frame and that is sir, why this is happening. Sir, if ambition is, is happening, the core of I'm politics, sir. That is that the politics is not the politics is within the party of Congress are losing their trust in its leadership. Where is the leadership in Congress? It's not about ideology alone. One second, it's not about Kushbo Gulahir or Joel Kamjuni. You cannot define politics by careerism and okay. All right, fair enough. Politics is ideology first. All right, ideology first. Kushbo, go ahead with your point. I think it's very important when we talk about ideologies. We all are here. We are not doing a business here by being in politics. We are talking about how we take the country forward. What are we going to give to the next generation? And what is the legacy you're leaving behind for the next generation? What did you and when you look me? at it, you need a leadership. And that's when the, the importance of a leadership is there. And that's what, what we look at. All right, at, so that's uh, a key question. Would you like Congress to take that 30 that seconds? Zero leadership. Leadership. Right. Narendra Modi is seen to be a more viable Congress. leader. Narendra Modi is seen to be a more viable leader. Then Sonia Gandhi, Rahul or Priyanka? No, it's There's a, no it's leadership, zero leadership in Congress as of now. 
the then question ask is, me why the people, why is, people didn't no, leave the fact, and speak? Why the people didn't leave six years back? Why the people didn't leave when, when they were with Congress? Oh, 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 one second, you made your point. Let Ojoy make his remarks. I have to move on to something else. Ojoy, go ahead, last 30 seconds, please. You know, the question is people like Kushbu and everybody, the only party which gives you access to the leadership. And Mr. Modi, who has made 50, 60 percent of India poorer, more communal, more poorer, drop in GDP, uh, social fabric gone, great leader. Kushbuji, hats off to, you know, narratives and lies which we can All right, okay, look, I mean, that's a larger, Ojo, and not to shut you uh, down or anything, yeah, right? That, that's a larger issue. Here, here, but today you've lost an important leader. We are not here to do I think we are here to make sense. Okay, all right, okay. That's the fact. Okay, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us. The fact is we have become... I think the Congress really needs to hope that more leaders don't quit. Uh, we're going to follow that theme very closely, but a couple of comments which have come in on coup. Manohar writes in saying, uh, did this decision come after a hint of Priyanka Gandhi as chief ministerial candidate of Uttar Pradesh? Group captain MKS says, once the Congress fixes its leadership issues properly, things will improve for the party. Well, ahead of Republic Day, we are joined by a very, very special uh, guest. Anita Bose Faf is the daughter of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, and it is such a wonderful week for us over here in India with that wonderful hologram coming up uh, behind India Gate. It's going to be replaced soon with the real statue of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. It's an incredible honor um, uh, for, for millions across this country and indeed around the world. Thank you very much, ma'am, for being with us. My first question to you. Do you believe, as we look upon this statue or this hologram of Netaji, it's equally important at this juncture of India's history to remember about his core values? For example, the importance that he placed in bringing together people of different faiths, of different backgrounds, of different, of, of, of different languages and working together with them. Namaskar to all of you and thank you for your question. Uh, indeed, I think even though it's 75 years after India became independent uh, and Netaji uh, has not lived through that period, uh, the fact that uh, he still inspires people and, and moves them personally, I think uh, make it very relevant and also possible to uh, convey values which I think are indeed very yeah. important today in India and throughout the world because unfortunately divisive forces in different um, composition and form uh, exist in other countries as well and have become very serious problems there too if you think of the United States or some of the European countries uh, so India is not alone in that but I think India maybe um, has more problems with regard to communal uh, differences uh, than maybe some other countries and I think certainly in this respect uh, Netaji set a very good example together with the INA uh, that uh, communal differences can be overcome and uh, there can be cooperation between the, uh, sure. the, the different groups for the well-being of all. Ma'am, um, mm. you know, will, will um, the chapter on Netaji in a sense, be well and truly over when the ashes are returned to India. Would that mark, uh, you know, a conclusion to what's been a lifelong effort of yours uh, to bring the ashes back, to perhaps immerse them in the Ganga? Uh, do you believe it's now more than time for that to take place? Uh, I do believe indeed that uh, he deserves to return to his home country, even though he could not do it alive, at, at least sort of as a symbolic uh, uh, gesture, of course, we don't know. He, he probably is nowhere he, uh, where he can watch us or anything. Uh, but um, perhaps he I is think, watching us. Who knows? Well, who knows? If he is, I think he would like to return to his country, uh, even though uh, Japan has been quite hospitable to him. Uh, and for me personally, also, and uh, I'm going on 80. So uh, the time I have left uh, is not that long and I would rather uh, prefer to get this done and uh, my oldest son said not too long ago, now get going and get it done. I don't want to inherit this problem. Um, 
you are the legal heir to his remains. Um, so, is it not something strictly that you are internationally legally entitled to his remains? Uh, why does this have to be between the government of Japan and the government of India? Um, possibly I am legally entitled to do that and, and uh, could do it without the consent of uh, either the Indian or the Japanese government. Uh, but I think it is also a matter of courtesy towards uh, uh, the temple and towards Japan uh, to sort of uh, accept their uh, wishes and, uh, and they certainly would like to have the remains returned although the, more recently uh, the uh, present priest had also uh, contemplated whether it would be possible to keep back a small amount of the remains at the temple. I don't know what the motivation is uh, in, in that, whether it is really sort of the religious side of it or whether he also hopes to get support for the temple. Uh, when was the, this this conveyed to you? Pardon? When was this uh, conveyed to you? Ne never heard of this before, that they wanted uh, to keep back a part of the mortal uh, remains. It wasn't ashes. conveyed to me directly. I think I'm, I'm not sure who told me. I th most likely my my nephew uh, Shugata because he has been visiting Japan quite often right. and whenever he goes to Japan he also uh, gives his homage at the, uh, at the Renkochi Shrine and I think and, and he's in, in contact with the priest, uh, the previous priest uh, because this is really the third generation already and uh, I think I think he mentioned it uh, or s anyway, somebody sure. mentioned it to me. Uh, sure. Ma'am, let me ask you this. Um, it's election season now in India. You know, we've got all of these very crucial elections, state elections across the country. There, is, there are some who feel that the, uh, the, that the image of Netaji as a strong nationalist leader, um, that is being usurped for political purposes. Do you, do you think that's fair or do you believe that this is a genuine honor? which has belatedly come to one of India's finest sons? I think it's a combination of both. I have no doubt that uh, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, no uh, less than the, the Chief Minister of West Bengal, uh, Madam Banerjee, uh, are true admirers of Netaji and respect him and, and want to pay their homage. On the other hand, they are politicians, and I don't think it is illegitimate for a politician uh, to use uh, the possibility to communicate with the electorate uh, that way. What I would not approve of is say that uh, Netaji was hijacked uh, as, a, as a proponent of communal rivalry. Uh, right. because that certainly would do him injustice. Uh, but even if, if you consider that the leaders of those days were not always of a mind and there were some controversies between them and so on, you have to keep in mind that the main objective really that also uh, counts today is that they all work towards independence. That is sure. the end. They didn't agree on, the, uh, on all parts of the way, uh, so from that point of view, even if uh, there were differences of opinion between, uh, I feel no particular problem. For example, speaking out, Tarda Patel was uh, was a, an opponent to my father to some extent. Uh, I have no problem to pay homage uh, and respects to him sure. or participated in, a, in a, a session on Netaji's birthday which uh, the um, uh, Sada Patel Association in, in England uh, uh, had and I think there's neither anything wrong with they are doing that sure. and they evidently feel comfortable with it and I do too. Fair enough, fair enough ma'am. Uh, let me ask you this. Um, for an entire generation, more than one generation of Indians, um, you know, who want to know more about Netaji, could you share with us, you know, any memories which you may have uh, of, of of your own part? Because you were very very small uh, when Netaji yes, uh, went I away. Yes, I don't have any personal memories. But I the was memories only from your mother, or the school. stories from your mother. Um, what are some of those stories or, or memories which, from your mother, 
of, of, of your father that you can share with us? Of course, you might surmise that uh, my mother had a biased view of him. I, I think they were both very devoted to each other. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, as a, I didn't realize that as a child so much, uh, but as a grown woman, I asked myself sometimes, uh, it, uh, my mother really got a very rough deal. So uh, I would have... Uh, uh, understood if she had been bitter against my father in some ways because she always played second fiddle it was always the country first it was always the, the willingness to risk his life and everything and to go off when he felt he had to go off so I'm sure that was not very easy for her uh, if you just uh, think of the fact that I was just two months old when he left Europe by submarine and he knew that he may not see the end of that journey uh, well he saw the end of that journey but uh, they never got back together again uh, there were a, a couple of uh, letters which the which he could send because that was more time and uh, japan and and europe were uh, opposite ends of the world almost and so it was really amazing that she really had this fierce loyalty. Sure. sure. Um, and um, well, I think uh, they had they had they had relatively little time together. I think we once added it up. I think it's it's less than three years. Which, if you put all the time together, right. about a, a year and a half with interruptions in the thirties, and then during the Second World War. And um, of course, they spent more time together because she also worked for him and with him. Right. So in in working together, you have also a sort of a camaraderie. Absolutely. But uh, uh, I think. Uh, no, ma'am, thank you so much for, for sharing those thoughts and, and you know, again, sharing, uh, you know, the equation between your mother and your father, the fact that she saw so little of him, the fact that she always supported him, the fact that you were so young when he actually went away in that submarine and then, you know, you never got to see him again, your mother never got to see him again, but for a few letters which were exchanged. It's a remarkable story of one of India's finest, finest um, uh, men. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's been an honor speaking to you. Thank you and Jai Hind.